Hey guys, I hope you guys are doing good. I really, really miss seeing you on Sundays and being able to say hi to you. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to see each other very, very soon. I, I can't wait to see you guys. But until then, I wanted to see if you wanted to read another book with me. I had a lot of fun last time. Uh, I hope you liked it. I have another book uh, by Max Lucado. This one's called A Hat for Adam. I don't know if you can see that okay. A hat. Did I say Adam? For Ivan. A hat for Ivan. A hat for Ivan. I think you guys are really going to like it. So if you're ready, let's get started, okay? Ivan was a happy boy. He lived in the town of Hatville, a place where everyone wore hats. Not just any hats. The doctors wore doctor hats. The cooks wore cooking hats. The farmers wore farming hats. Everyone wore hats. And Ivan's father was the hat maker. A very good hat maker. Ivan loved to watch him work. People would come into his shop to order a hat, and Ivan's father would ask, What do you really love to do. I love to fish, one man said. Do you fish well? That I do. Then you need a fishing hat. So Ivan's father would make it, complete with a pocket for the hooks and a small bucket for the bait. He made everyone a hat, and since everyone wore a hat, everyone knew what everyone else loved to do and did well. You see all those different hats? People are wearing on there. Check out the, the fish one over there. Isn't that cool? Want some flowers? Well, talk to the lady with roses on her head. Need some directions? Ask the man with a hat made from a map. Wondering how to fix a fence? Look for the fellow who wears a hat shaped like a hammer. Everyone wore hats, and Ivan's dad made the hats. Could anything be better than that? One thing could, getting your own hat. And Ivan was about to receive his. At the age of 10, each boy and girl celebrated hat day. Ivan was nine, going on 10. He could hardly wait to get his hat. What will mine look like, he wondered. Would it make you, would it make, be made of felt like the clerks, bright blue like the policemen's, covered with cloth like the dressmakers? He didn't know, but he would soon find out. All Ivan could think about was his new hat. All he could talk about was his new hat. He told everyone he saw, my hat day is coming. Check out this. The people in Hatville were excited for Ivan. Some people have their own ideas about what kind of hat he should wear. Felix the baker did. Ivan passed Felix's bakery every morning on the way to school. And every morning, Ivan stopped in the doorway and smelled the baking bread. Oh, I love the smell of baking bread. He could always see Felix. Felix was short and round, like the cookies he baked. But he could always see Felix, Felix's bobbing hat. It was tall and white, like the wedding cakes that he made. One day, when Ivan stopped by for a sniff, Felix was waiting for him. I hear you're about to get your hat, he smiled at the young boy. I am, replied Ivan with pride. Well, I have a surprise for you. Come in. And with that, the baker stepped back into the shop, and Ivan followed. What could the surprise be? A donut? Some cookie dough? What do you think it is? No, Felix didn't give Ivan something to eat. He gave him something to wear. I have a hat for you, announced the baker. Ivan was surprised. Not disappointed. Not happy, just surprised. He thought his hat would come from his father, the hat maker. But then again, maybe he was wrong. Besides, 
Ivan didn't want to hurt his friend's feelings. Thank you, Mr. Felix, Ivan said, taking the hat. Go ahead, put it on. And so Ivan did, but it was too big. It fell not just over his eyes, but over his whole face. That's okay, little friend. It will soon fit. Just wear it anyway. Ivan didn't know what to say except thanks again. And he turned to walk out the door. But when he did, he ran into the wall. Here, I'll help you, offered Felix, guiding his friend to the door. You look great, just like me. Ivan started to say thanks again. But he tripped on the step and fell flat on his back. Funny, he said to himself. I thought my hat would fit better than this. Since he walked the same path to school every morning, Ivan was able to feel his way down the street. Soon, the scent of daisies and roses told him he was nearing the flower shop. When he heard the hammers pounding, he knew he was near the carpenter's shop. And the sound of music told him he was passing by Miss Anita's piano studio. Miss Anita loved music. And Miss Anita loved Ivan. Ivan's father had made her a special music hat. Wide, round, with tiny guitars on top. And piano strings dangling from the brim. Since each string had a bell on the end, everyone knew when Miss Anita was near. It was a different sort of hat, but it was perfect for Miss Anita. No one else would want to wear it, but Miss Anita wouldn't be without it. She loved the hat, and she loved Ivan. And she loved it when he stopped by to hear her play. Of course, on this day, she didn't recognize him. All she tall saw was a tall hat on a small boy. Who are you? she asked. From within the hat came a muffled voice. It's me, Miss Anita. It's Ivan. He heard her quick steps on the wooden floor. That's not the hat for you, she declared as she yanked it off of his head. It's not, he replied. Of course not. There's only one hat for you. Suddenly, Miss Anita disappeared into her studio and came out with a very different looking hat. I made this just for you. I've been working on it for days. Here, try it on. Ivan was surprised. Not happy. Not disappointed. Just surprised. He'd never seen a hat like this one. Funny, Ivan said to himself, Miss Anita is a good musician, but she's not a very good hat maker. A piccolo dangled from the side, and sheet music was glued to the top. Bells and whistles hung in front of Ivan's face, and a drumstick dangled like a ponytail on his back. It looks perfect, Miss Anita declared. This hat was made for you. Ivan smiled. The music teacher turned and walked back into the studio, pleased with herself. Now, Ivan had two hats. Oh, goodness, he thought. Two hats. One in his hand and one on his head. He didn't like wearing either one, but he did not want to hurt anyone's feelings. He didn't know what else to do except to keep walking to school. But the hat maker's son was barely down the street when he met a new problem. What do you think the new problem is? Adam! The voice was deep and big and belonged to Bruno, the firefighter. What is that on your head? Miss Anita gave it to me. As a joke? No, for real. That's a good thing I came along. I know your hat day was near, so I brought you a gift. For the third time that day, a hat was placed on Ivan's head. That hat was just like Bruno's, long and red and very shiny. A piece of fire hose was strapped to the top around it. 
and a miniature ladder stood straight up on top. The big fireman held the hat steady while Ivan tightened the strap beneath his chin. There's another picture of it right there if you can see that picture. Now that's what I call a hat, Bruno boomed in his deep voice. Ivan stepped back and when he did, he fell over. The hat was so tall and heavy that the boy couldn't keep his balance. Bruno helped him up, stepped back, and Ivan fell again. You'll get used to it, Ivan, Bruno told him. I did. And with that, he turned to leave. Ivan tried and tried to stand, but kept falling backward. He stepped back at last, as fast as he could, until his back was against the wall. Thanks, Mr. Bruno, he shouted, although he didn't feel thankful. Funny, Ivan thought to himself. It's easy for Bruno to wear this big hat, but it's hard for me. What he did feel was confused. When he had left the house, he had no hats. Now he had three, and he didn't like any of them. With one, he couldn't see. With the other, he didn't want to be seen. And with the third, he couldn't even stand up. What was he going to do? He did not know what to do except to go to school. So, with one hand holding a heavy hat on his head, and one hand holding the others, he carefully walked the rest of the way. What do you think happened at school? Well, things didn't get any better at school. In fact, they got worse. His hats interrupted the class. If he wore the baker's hat, everyone chuckled. If he wore the musical hat, he made too much noise. He tried to keep Bruno's hat on his head, but he kept falling off his chair. Ivan, the teacher finally decided, maybe you better go home. Ivan was sad, but he knew that she was right. He still didn't know what to do. He had too many hats. And on the way home, he was given many more. The farmer gave him a straw hat with a bandana to keep the sun off. The bookkeeper gave him a netted one to keep the bees out. The woodsman gave him a wool cap to keep his ears warm. A clown gave him a cone with many colors. And the bookshop owner gave him a hat shaped like a dictionary. There's the bee one right there. Ivan soon had so many hats, he could barely carry them all. He would drop one, and when he bent over to pick it up, he would drop another. He finally had them balanced when all of a sudden, he saw Felix the baker. Oh no, he thought, I'm wearing the farmer's hat. So he dropped them all and just barely got the baker's hat on his head and over his eyes when Felix saw him. Looks great, Ivan, shouted Felix. Ivan sounded tired, thanks. Balancing the hats was hard enough, but now Ivan's eyes were covered as he walked. He couldn't see where he was going. He had stopped to rest when he heard the tinkling of tiny bells. It was Miss Anita. Ivan pulled off the baker's hat and threw on the musical hat just in time. Oh, you look wonderful, Miss Anita exclaimed as she passed. Ivan started picking up the rest of the hats when he heard the deep voice of Bruno. Ivan, is that you? As quickly as he could, Ivan replaced the musical hat with the fireman's hat. It's me, he said, straightening, then falling back and back and back and back until he landed on his bottom. Bruno didn't see Ivan fall. He just was already turning the corner. Looks terrific, my friend, Bruno called over his shoulder. Thanks, Ivan mumbled to no one but himself. He was so tired, he didn't even try to get up. He just sat there, surrounded by his hats. Looks like you've had quite the day. Ivan couldn't remember when a voice sounded so good. Father, he shouted, jumping up, you won't believe what happened today. Everyone gave me a hat and I... None of them fit? Ivan's father spoke up. 
That's right, said the boy. And they make you tired? Ivan nodded. But you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings? Ivan shook his head. His father put his arm around his son. That's right. Ivan stopped. How did you know? I'm the hat maker. Ivan, I've seen what happens when people wear hats they weren't intended to wear. They feel silly. They fall down and they get tired. Ivan's father got down on his knees and wiped a smudge of dirt off his son's cheek. Listen, son, just because someone gives you a hat, that doesn't mean you are supposed to wear it. They mean well, but they don't know you. That's my job. I'm the hat maker, and I'm your father. So you'll make a hat just for me? I will. All you have to do is ask. Oh, please, father, Ivan smiled. I would like that very, very much. Well, let's gather up these hats and go home. As the hat maker and his child walked towards home, the father asked, Tell me, Ivan, what do you really love to do? The end. The end. Oh, we have a father. Did you know that? And he makes each of us individual and special. And he's got a plan just for your life, just as he has for mine. And I think that's one of the things that we can learn from this book. A hat for Ivan. Thank you guys so much for uh, reading this book with me. And again, I hope to see you real soon. I love you guys.